Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're gonna do something stupid. This is the top five worst maps in the game, and I'm only choosing from stock maps here because if I chose from modded maps, I would just feel bad because number one would be some kid who has no idea what he's doing. He made his first map and he is so proud of it. And I'm over here going, yeah, that's the worst map I've ever seen. And he's like a huge fan of mine or something. He's just crying like, why VR hates my map? So we're not going to do that. Instead, we're just focused on the ones that come with the game. And I'm going to tell you now, most of my complaints are going to be pretty nitpicky. Because all the maps that come with the game serve a specific purpose. So this is just, if I absolutely had to choose my five worst maps, this is what it would be. So number five is actually the hardest one to choose for me. But I think, after a lot of debate, number five is going to be Jungle Rock Island. I actually really like driving on the roads here. The problem I have is what happens when you crash, because it seems like every time you crash, something will happen that makes it more annoying than it should be. But if you just want to drive, this map is actually really good for that. So I got the off-road version of the Sunburst here, and I'm just picking any dirt road that I see. And it's fun to drive on. But this is a video for Beam and G Drive. Most of the people who watch these videos really don't care about how fun something drives or how something drives. All they care about is how it crashes. And this map does not work well for that. Because it seems like most of the time when you crash, it's going to have some issue where it's covered by trees and you can't see the damage. You guys use a no grabber to pull it out. Or like you see here, the vehicle is actually stuck. So if I try to pull this out with the node grabber, it's not going to happen unless I use a ton of force. We could just pull off the whole trunk because it's so stuck in the trees. Look at all this force I'm using just to get it out. I've damaged it more by pulling with the node grabber. Now it's rolling upside down because I had to yank at it so hard to get it unstuck. So by the time we can finally look at the damage, you got to ask, how much of that damage was me flipping the car upright and getting onto the road so we could look at it and how much was from the actual impact? And well, I don't know. So it really makes it difficult to make videos here for situations like that. So that's what it looked like after I mangled it. And now let's get a new car and try to do another crash. For this one, we're gonna use, how about the Null Heart? I don't know when I last used that, but it's a fun little car to drive. Because this map actually has good roads to drive on for both dirt roads and paved roads. You already saw some of the dirt roads, so here's some of the paved roads. And this section of the road in particular is just a really nice section of the road to drive on. You can really gain a lot of speed going through here and you gotta be smooth through the corners and it's really rewarding to drive through it fast. Oh, gotta hold on. All right, we're good. The problem though is, let's say for example, all right, I accidentally flew off and now we have a crash. Well, we're covered by trees. I can't see the damage at all. So if I wanna see the damage, we gotta no grab this car out of here and we gotta bring it like, all the way back to the road, which is quite a distance to be trying to pull something with a no grab or not hit any trees or anything. And <laughs> you just drop it on the road. Okay, you don't need to drop it on the road. That was a little bit of an accident. You see, it's like, okay, now it's on the road. We got to flip it back up, right? And again, you got to ask how much damage was from the crash and how much was from the no grabber. Sure, we could also do the save and load damage thing. But again, that's just another step you add when you use this map where every other map you crash, and you can just look at the car right there because it's not going to be covered by shrubs or kind of awkwardly stuck in a rock or something. It's just easy to look at and see. And if you do need to pull it, usually you just pull it back a few feet by grabbing on the bumper or something and then you can see it fine. So that's why I don't use Jungle Rock Island that much is because it makes the videos longer and less interesting to look at. Now, for number four, it's going to be the cliff map. And honestly, guys, when was the last time you saw me use the cliff map? Because I legitimately have no clue when that was. There's really nothing bad about this map, but it's so one-dimensional. All you do is you drive the truck off of the cliff and then watch it fall. That's all there is to it. So it's kind of like Leap of Death, which I use all the time, but that's just out of tradition. I've done it for years where it's like, here's a car. Now we throw it down Leap of Death. It's not exactly entertaining or anything, but it is tradition. As for this map though, it has a lot of this, where the truck has been crashed a bit, and now we're gonna roll, and we're gonna roll, and we're gonna roll, and who knows when that's actually gonna end, because I don't really have any steering at this point. It's just gravity taking over, and you have really long chunks where basically nothing's happening. Unless your goal is to get to the bottom this is not interesting to see damage to the vehicle. This is just waiting for the damage to happen. And a lot of the time, once you get to this speed, nothing else will happen. 
but sometimes there'll be more if you get a lucky roll and you never quite know until you actually let it roll down the cliff. All right, it finally came to a stop. That took a while. Let's go back up here and try this again. We'll get something faster this time. We'll just go with a real fast SBR4 hill climb. That makes sense. We're on top of a hill, so it should be the hill climb version, although we're going down, so maybe we need the hill descend version. Yes, that totally makes sense. Actually, that does make some sense because if you were doing a hill climb, you'd want a car with more power than if you were doing a hill descend because when you're doing the hill descend, you got gravity assisting you, so you don't have to worry about having as much power. So this one's a little bit better than the last one. We haven't hit the section where we just roll. We're actually bouncing around and getting consistent damage to the vehicle, although it's not really enough to do much visible damage because it has a roll cage that's reinforcing the central structure. So it's not always that you get the situation where you're just rolling and rolling and rolling, but it does happen and it just is boring to watch when it does. Something like this, it's great. You're getting bouncing and crashing all over the place and then it stops and the question is, well, how long are we gonna roll down this hill? Because it looks like we can roll for quite some time or maybe it'll just come to a stop because the friction is too much with the way the car's wheels are so messed up. And it's gonna come to a stop, yep. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. I guess if you really wanted to, you could try to drive down it, but that's probably not an easy thing to do. You'd have to get something like the crawler version of the hopper, and you just go really, really slow, which actually might be fun to try to do someday. That might be a future video. Let's give it a little try right now to see just how hard it would be. And another complaint of mine about this map is it's completely unchanged, it seems like, for the past five years or so. Like, I legitimately cannot remember the last time that this map was changed. There are no trees on this map, too. Where are the trees at? I guess so you don't get stuck on a tree as you go down. And okay, well, that's how easy it is to accidentally flip over if you're trying to actually drive down it. It's very easy. I made the slightest mistake, and we are going to roll down this hill, hopefully in a interesting to look at fashion. So far, so good, but we're going to the bad zone. Like, there's this area right here where it always seems like your car just kind of stops rolling no matter what. Right here. All right, so we're rolling a little bit, but it is calming down, and it's going to either come to a stop or roll forever. Let's see. Come to a stop. Be nice for me. All right, it came to a stop, so we can look at how beat up it is. The answer is very. And then we could go ahead and go to the next map. So for map number three, this is a map I don't think I've ever used in video because it's not really a map. It's called template preview. And I'm gonna tell you now, the last three maps aren't really maps because this is just like a template you can use to build your own map. So it's not a map you would ever actually choose from the map selector to drive on. It's a map you'll choose like one time when you're trying to figure out how the map editor works. And then once you start tweaking this, you would save it as a separate map. So then you have your own that you can modify because if you actually modify this one and then the game updates or something, you'll probably lose all your data or get messed up or something. So you definitely don't want to save over this map. But anyways, it's just some hills. There's nothing really spectacular about them. You can drive up them with a decent off-road vehicle like the off-road version of the van. And if you're good at off-roading, you could probably even take something like an SBR4 up and you'll smash the bumpers up, but you can make it up to the top if you really wanted to. Maybe that's what the goal will be. We'll make it to the top, which I am not at the right angle for, so I'll readjust and then we'll get to the very top and then we'll drive down at full speed and see what happens. So going very slowly around here. Don't want to tip over. When you're driving like this, you really have to watch out for tipping over because this thing is so top heavy. One little bump or one little steer too much and it's going to roll on you. So you got to be very, very careful. And now we have enough room to get up to speed and get to the top, hopefully. It looks like it doesn't get too steep. And we are there a little violently. Oh, stop. Yeah, that's the perfect way to get there. Although, technically, the top is over there. I don't think we can climb that with this vehicle. It's just a little too steep, and there's no way I could actually set on the top, but we could go like, yeah, hi, I, I plant my flag or something there. And now, we can drive down at max speed. So we're just gonna floor it, and we're gonna see how stable does it stay. The answer is very stable. It did not flip at all. We can flip it at the end, probably. Yeah, so there's a flip into the water with Actually, minimal damage. It did not get that badly damaged. We'll take a look, but it is a little bit difficult to see since it's underwater. And what is that tire in the background doing? <laughs> He's just splashing for no reason. Oh, tire, you crazy. Anyways, number two is going to be grid small pure. 
And this is a very simple map. It's just a grid that seems like it goes on forever. And that's it. And I do use it in videos sometimes. But the problem is, is I feel like this could very, very easily be merged with grid map to just make one map that covers both of these bases. There could be a technical reason why they can't do this, but grid map already has something that's kind of like grid small pier on it. You just got to go to the outside area and we have almost the same experience. The only real difference here is that the road eventually vanishes, where if you're on grid small pier, it seems like the road goes forever. On this one, you can easily get to the end, but even once the road vanishes, you can still drive. You're just driving on an invisible surface. And I think using just this regular drag car, we should get to that spot. The only question is what's gonna happen first? Are we gonna get to where the road disappears or will the engine blow up? Everyone place your bets in the comments because I don't know for sure. I think it kind of depends on how hard I push it and I'm pushing it as hard as I possibly can, just flooring it nonstop. So I'm not gonna give any help to make it last longer. We already got the oil overheating. You look in the bottom right, the temperature gauge has been maxed out. So really it's just a matter of time before the engine blows up. It looks like we are getting to the end soon. I can see the horizon where it looks like it merges and there it is. So you see it keeps on driving. It's just the textures in. So why couldn't they just extend the textures here and then you don't need grid small pure anymore. The only reason I use grid small pure is because I forget you can do this on grid map most of the time. And by the way, I don't know if you noticed, but the textures disappeared just before the engine blew up. It was a really, really close race actually, but grid map wins by just a little bit. So what is the worst map in the game? You probably already know because all the other maps are pretty dang good. It is showroom. So showroom is a really important map and there is no way it should be removed from the game even if it's technically the worst map to drive on. Because if you try to drive around here you just have like some invisible walls floating in the air and then outside of that it's basically just grid small pure. But this map is so important because this is the map used to create all of the thumbnails in the vehicle selector. It's what allowed me to make a dark mode for my vehicle so all the backgrounds are black now instead of white. It makes my whole dark mode theme kind of all go together. It's what allows mod makers to make thumbnails to look just like the official ones. This is an absolutely necessary map, but it's a map where there's nothing for you to do if you're here to drive. And that's what I'm looking at these maps about, is how are they to play on? I know it's important, but it's the worst one to play on. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Until next time, this has been YBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by how good my thumbnails look when they're in dark mode, and then they get mixed in with the mods, which are white, and it actually makes it really easy to see what's a mod and what's not. Just putting that out there. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time. Also, it turns out when you're on this map, your cursor doesn't automatically disappear like it normally would. So yeah, my cursor's just floating there. Could have moved it out of the screen, but it's too late now. It stays there. And then I leave a reason why.